Hi, what a lovely way to start this morning and just full of the presence of God. I love that this church is, we just, as Aaron was speaking about last week, we host the presence of God and it's so strong in here this morning. Just the peace that fell, Lindsay, when you prayed for Arvin's family and the presence of God does that. It touches us in places that no human can, we can't reach because the presence of God is so strong. And I just absolutely loved Aaron's message last week on hosting the presence of God and how, how important that is for us to understand. There was so much depth in it and how he surrounds us in every situation. And I just felt surrounded this morning, not just by a body of wonderful people, but by the presence of God ushering in. We were ushering him in this morning and it felt so alive even in the midst of the pain and in the midst of the difficulty, there was life and it was such a beautiful time. Thank you, worship band as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So when we make room for the presence of God in our life, we become the host with the most. <laughs> we become the host with the most because we've got something inside of us that others don't have. And it's remembering that because sometimes we can get stuck forgetting what we're carrying inside of us and how much joy that brings and how much peace that brings and how much fire that can bring in our lives. Life's not meant to be boring. God didn't create us to be robots or just walking about doing the mundane and going from A to B. He created us for a life of adventure. Amen? Who likes adventure? Anyone? It Within reason, okay, maybe not like... <laughs> charging ourselves off uh, mountains or doing anything mad and crazy. But adventure is when your eyes are opened, you're excited about the next step because you know that God is with you, that you're not alone. And it's not, when we, when we get stuck in this kind of, oh, you know, what's next? Oh, it's just this. And maybe I'll just um, go to the next stage, it kind of feels a little bit dry. And I think that's when we get stuck, we get bored, and we get a little bit flat, and our fire starts to go out. So as hosts with the most, we grow our capacity to, to, to love, to show kindness, to just be extravagant in our love for people and for those around us, and to show the light of the world to those around us. That's our job. And it helps us to be a blessing to those who are in dark places who are struggling if we can be the host with the most and have that capacity inside us. So today we're going to enter in to the beginning chapters in Luke. We're going to look at two very special ladies um, in the Bible. Elizabeth and Mary, two women who in the eyes of society would have been considered fairly insignificant. And I loved what Erin shared as well about the insignificant being awesome. When we feel insignificant, God can turn that into awesome. When we feel like we're in an insignificant place, God can make that place so awesome. The Holy Spirit touches both of these ladies in an awesome, miraculous, and unexpected way. One in old age and the other one young and unmarried. Both circumstances seemingly impossible to conceive. Although both women did not expect to be chosen, they trusted and had faith that God's plan would be victorious. We're going to look at that in more detail. So my title this morning is Expect the Unexpected Carriers of Hope. So we're going to look at that a wee bit more. Expect the Unexpected. Who woke up this yesterday morning and were like, oh my goodness, how many weeks have they said the beast from the east is going to return and we're going to have mountains of snow? And we've been like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then yesterday morning when we weren't expecting it, well, I didn't expect it. I don't think the weather people expected it. And it was so beautiful. I woke up to this beautiful snowy scene. How gorgeous was that? <clears throat> and you know, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I like that God operates in the unexpected. Our minds sometimes... We like a bit of order. We like things where we can be in control and we know what's happening. But that's not where God operates at his best. 
That's because we are, we are in the driving seat. When we come out of that and we let God take control, things are so much more awesome. And God does not operate in the parameters of our human thinking and our logic, our logic and our reason. He operates in a completely different way. And I think for us to be aware of that is so important, awareness of, of how he is and how he moves, not in the here and now and our perspective, but his perspective, which is multidimensional, not just linear. When we think of the linear surface, we think about the straight line. And I was reading about this. Do you know there's no such thing as a straight line in the world? I was totally blown away by this fact. And it is fact, absolutely no such thing. Check it out. I had to check it out because I was like, I'm not sure about that. But there's no such thing as a straight line. It says straight lines and perfect circles don't exist in reality. They are mathematical abstractions. Therefore, there is no perfect line or circle in the entire universe. And unless you count in perfect shapes that constantly change at the quantum molecular le level, whatever that means, <laughs> in reality, all objects are three-dimensional in space-time made of quanta. There are no exceptions. So this is no accident that this straight-line perspective that we can often enter into and wonder why you know, we're trying to go along this straight line, like, oh, this, why is this so boring? And God's going, because I'm not, a I'm not designed you to be like that. I've not designed it. It's more exciting than that. There's so much more God has got. He goes way higher and way deeper. And when we start to understand that, we can start to be more aware of his presence in our life and more aware of what he's doing and how he's moving in our life. I believe when we try to keep things linear and keep it in narrow focus, we limit the move of God in our life. Sometimes we wonder why things aren't working or because we're trying to do it in our own strength or we're trying to do it according to our plan. We miss what he wants to show us. Last week, I'm going to keep referring to your sermon here. Behold, don't miss this. What shall I, what I'm doing? That's what God says. Don't miss it. So if we think higher and deeper and watch what God's doing and be more aware of his presence in everyday situations, in the tiniest of details, we can start to live the life according to his plans and purposes in a more fulfilling way. In January 2020, God gave me these words. Every new year, instead of New Year's resolutions, because I don't keep them, <laughs> I ask God for a word. I just say, God, give me a word. If it's a, a verse from the Bible or just a word that I can focus on this year, I can pray into. And this was just before COVID. And the words he gave me were out of the box. <laughs> I thought, God, what are you trying to say? I'm out of the box. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what does out of the box mean? And I really believe that over the last, what was that, three years, God really showed me that sometimes we have placed him in a container that he doesn't belong in, <laughs> that he should be, that we should take him out of the box, that we should take our thinking out of the box, that we should let him lead us and guide us more than what, how we ordain it or how we structure it. And there's so much more to that, but I won't have time to go into it. But out of the box thinking, out of the box where God can do incredible, miraculous things. Lindsay spoke of miracles and awesome wonder. And just to have that perspective in our lives can just, just change everything. It changes atmospheres. His presence changes atmospheres. We change atmospheres when we walk into a room and we carry that presence and we carry that knowledge and awareness of who he is. We've got to remember the veil has been torn. And heaven is closer than we think. And God's presence dwells within his people. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So how many people today <laughs> are right where they expected to be 20 years ago? Anybody? <laughs> Again, it's because when we, we, we make these plans and we make these 
organized ways of our life is going to go like this, like this, like this, like this. And God says, no, will you just listen and let me guide you? And it's amazing how many people uh, we can meet and how many connections we can have that is ordained from God, that God has arranged for us to, to encounter. He, it could be connections, friendships, an unexpected letter through the post, an unexpected call, a meeting or situation, which should cause us to stop and ask, what does this mean? I bet when we look back over our lives, there's people we've, we've met and had relationship with or have been part of our story that have been monumentous parts of our story because God ordained it that way. He wanted you to encounter that. He wanted you to have that, um, that situation to help you on your journey and to carry you through to his plan and his purpose. So it's up to us to ask God, what are you showing me, Lord? What are you... What are you in this situation that I'm in right now, what does it mean? Where am I going? Where are you leading me, God? Of course, in the natural, sometimes it may seem unimportant. Sometimes we can miss, we can miss these details because we're busy or we're distracted and, and it's when we're dwelling, when we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside us, that's how important it is because he opens our eyes. He opens our eyes, he opens our ears, and attunes us to a different perspective. We recognize the way that God is leading us. And yes, that is unexpectedly often that he leads us in ways that we don't really understand. So, who's been watching Christmas movies lately? Anybody? <laughs> yes, Abigail, yes! We started, I think we started early this year actually, got on our Christmas list and started going through them. One of my all-time favorites, who can guess the movie? Yes, all-time favorites. Beautiful, beautiful um, movie and absolutely love this story. And that was actually the picture of the snowy scene was actually Elaine going down to commercial in St. Margaret's Primary School yesterday. Looks like Narnia, right? How cool was that? God bless us with this beautiful, beautiful snowy day. And it did look like Narnia. But you know, I love how C.S. Lewis captures God's way and God's heart in the unexpected. When Lucy walks through the wardrobe, and I remember the first time watching it just being like, oh my goodness, <laughs> there's trees in the wardrobe. <laughs> How did they get trees in the wardrobe? And just this wonder and excitement of brushing past these fur coats and then brushing the trees and then into this snowy wonderland. And that's what God wants to open our eyes to. The fact that the unexpected is just around the corner. And he would never lead you anywhere dangerous or scary or hurtful. But if we trust him and have faith, it'll be something magical and wonderful that he can deliver miracles and, and set us free in ways that we never thought possible. Awareness of his presence in every situation, in every aspect of your life. His steadfast presence can bring peace in times of trouble. It can bring a peace to our heart, a rest for our souls. His presence can spur us on and get us excited to go and pray for someone or give them a word of encouragement or share our testimony. His presence can set, also set a fire in our hearts. It can set a fire in our hearts with, which fuels a passion for his kingdom and to see the lost saved, to see people redeemed that were once lost. And that fire fuels our journey. The Holy Spirit invites us to this lifestyle of awe and wonder and adventure where our awareness of God's kingdom here on earth becomes ever stronger. Our seemingly insignificant lives do become awesome when we partner with the Holy Spirit as we journey with him to bring and I'm journey with him. And I was laughing with Lindsay last night. I was like, we say walk with God and we imagine like as we, we dander we dander with God. 
And Lindsay has this great expression, which is like, hi, birdie fly, when you swing a child up in the air, you know? And sometimes I think God's like that. He likes to have fun with us and likes to give us some thrill and excitement and woo. And I think that's when we journey with the Holy Spirit and we partner with him, we get to see sparks of life where we wouldn't think are possible. We don't think are possible. Revival starts to become closer. Freedom. Hope. We're called to be light carriers in this dark and burdened world. In Luke 4, 18, Jesus reads from Isaiah in the synagogue. He, reads, he opens up the scroll and he reads this passage. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. Jesus spoke this, and it was speaking, he was speaking of himself. But you know, the same spirit that he was speaking of is also on you. It's on you. It's on you, and you, and you. So I want you all to stand this morning. Come on, get off your bottoms. <laughs> I want you to really believe this in your heart because I feel this is so important. The Spirit of God is on you. He has anointed you. He, I want you to read this with me. He has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Let's say it. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. Amen. Don't, don't go out of here and forget that. The Spirit of the Lord is on you to do all of these things, to set the captives free, to reach the hearts of those that have never heard the gospel, to touch lives where it seems unreachable. Each one of you has got the Spirit of the Lord in you and on you and all of you. He surrounds you. And I just encourage you this morning that in your walk with God, your high birdie fly or whatever that is, that he will be with you in every circumstance to bring that light and to carry that hope to those around you. Amen. You can take your seats. <laughs> How awesome is God. So let's delve into Luke's gospel to read about these two special women. Sorry, I took a bit long with that other one. I think I've got it up there. I'm just going to look at Zachariah first. See, he was visited by the angel while he was in the temple. He was performing his duties, and the angel appeared to him. We're just going to read from verse 11. The angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zachariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. And he will be a delight, a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He's never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he's born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make a ready people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have sent been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. So Zachariah hears this news and his question is, how can I be sure of this? He questions, I need, another, I need something more than you, this angel that's been sent from heaven to tell me. And further on in the story, we read that he becomes mute, that, that God makes him mute for a period of time because of his dis belief or his not not accepting at that moment in time of what has been said to him but further on we read that elizabeth's womb is opened in her old age and she could conceive and carry this messenger of hope 
who is John the Baptist, to a people desperate to hear of their Messiah's coming. Elizabeth's miracle baby was a gift from God, a gift not just to Zacharias and Elizabeth as an answer to prayer, but also a gift to the people to stir and restore hope again, prepare hearts to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, the Messiah they had long been waiting for. And 700 years earlier, the prophet Isaiah prophesied about a messenger who would prepare the way for the Lord. <clears throat> In Isaiah 40, verse, verses 3 to 5, this is 700 years before, it says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And 430 years earlier, Malachi also prophesied, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come into his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. So it was no accident that Elizabeth had her baby first, because he was to be the, prepare the way for Jesus' arrival. And God had this plan, and I love how this beginning part of the gospel story is all about life being created and life being birthed that deliver the plan of God of freedom and salvation. In, in verse 26, we read six months later, that the same angel appeared unexpectedly to Mary. So both unexpected visitations from God, these ladies weren't expecting to receive or conceive or do any of this amazing, awesome um, the task that God had, had put in front of them. Who would have expected it? But um, God had chosen each one of them, uh, both of them. So Although they were related, it was a divine connection, and this, friend brought, this friendship brought strength and increased faith that the promises of God would be fulfilled. Oh, sorry, wrong way. So we're just going to read from verse uh, 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked, how will this be? And if you remember, Zachariah asked, how as well? But differently, Mary was thinking from a logical perspective, she's a virgin, how am I going to be giving birth to the son of God? How is it possible? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born, to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. And Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. It's beautiful, isn't it? That this relationship, this connection, that the Holy Spirit has brought together these two women in this situation to help each other. And I love how the angel encourages Mary at this time, when it must, must have been pretty daunting, <laughs> pretty scary for her, to say that Elizabeth had also conceived, even in her old age, to prompt Mary to be aware that God was moving, that God was doing something incredible, that there was no need to fear, and her faith rose in those moments, and she went to visit um, Elizabeth. And Mary was so much younger than Elizabeth, 
She was probably, it says, between maybe 15, 14, 15 at the time. You're like, whoa, how young. And, me, and Elizabeth was an older woman, unable in uh, logical terms, in, in biological terms, to be able to have children. But I love how God joined them together. Even though they were relatives, they probably didn't see each other, but I love that sweet way of God. Who would have expected that an old lady and a young girl would have been the best of friends? And when Mary visited Elizabeth, it said that Elizabeth's uh, John the Baptist in, in Elizabeth's womb jumped, leapt with delight, leapt at the sound of Mary's voice, knowing the Savior of the world was present in the room. The Holy Spirit must have been so evident in that, in that time. And I just, I mean, oh, I wonder if how that encounter would have been. Although as a young Jewish girl, Mary would have known the prophecy that was in Isaiah 7, 14, where it says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. Although she would have, ex she would have known about that prophecy, she still wouldn't have expected that it would have been her. But it probably, her awareness of that prophecy would have again increased her faith to know that God's plans were coming into fruition that God was moving, that he was, he was there, he was present. And I do believe that Mary knew how to abide in the presence of God, that she walked closely with him. And the same with Elizabeth, because it says that God was going to, God had heard the prayers of Zachariah and Elizabeth. So they, they, they spent time in the presence of God and they trusted him. And both women had incredible faith, incredible faith to journey and carry what were to be the hope deliverers and freedom givers and path makers. Just incredible that they were given that um, amazing task to, to do to serve God. Mary was human in every way. There was nothing supernatural or extraordinary about her, yet she was chosen by God for the most important task a human being had ever been chosen for. So be encouraged today that God can use you no matter what your circumstances are. The Spirit of the Lord is on you. He's on you. You don't need to be highly educated, rich, got it all together, got everything done on your to-do list and your nail in life. That's not how God works. That's how the world works. And that's how we often value things. But in God's world, it's not, God's eyes, it's not like that. In fact, God often chooses the most humble and unassuming people to do the most incredible things. What we can learn from Mary is she did not become lifted up in her heart. She was carrying the Savior of the world. She's about to give birth to the Son of God. But she remained humble. She remained aware of her human nature. And she, instead, she chose to praise and broke out in song and praise, rejoicing in the fact that God had chose her. It says in Luke 1, 46 to 49, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. We sung that this morning. Holy holy, holy is his name. What was conceived inside her seemed, as, what, what was conceived inside her, a seemingly insignificant woman, was the most significant moment for all mankind. She carried the greatest gift the world could ever know. She carried the greatest gift that's inside you. Jesus Christ is in you this morning. She carried hope direct from heaven itself. She carried restoration, redemption, freedom within her womb. A gift from the Father straight from heaven. It's no, ex no accident that life is right at the center of the story. God breathes life. He is life. And life is the most precious thing in this world. Maybe you need to point it at it. That would help, wouldn't it? There we go. Don't worry, I'm almost finished. I'm looking at my time. 
So in John 1, we read, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him, was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. Jesus is the light. And I'm just going to play this wee video, which is quite an amazing. Thanks, Kate. So this is the moment of conception that we're going to witness here. So someone has documented that. That flash of light is the moment of conception right there. How amazing that in that moment, when life happens, light happens. When life happens, light happens. How awesome is our God. Jesus was there in the beginning of time, and God said, let there be light. He was born into this world, bringing light into a dark and weary world. Light and life go together. That's how God designed it. He designed it within us. He designed it, designed it when you were born. He designed it that way. When God spoke you into existence, light happened. Light happened. Life happened. So when we walk in light, we're walking in life and we carry that light and hope wherever we go. We're carriers of hope and light in this world. New life was birthed within you the moment you gave your life to Christ. Light entered your heart and sparked a revival in your soul. Now you've been entrusted with that gift and it's up to you to carry it well and deliver that hope. The Spirit of the Lord is on. Yeah, to preach the good news, to deliver hope to the hopeless, to free the lost. Remember these words. So what are your levels of hope this morning? What are your levels of hope sitting at this morning? Do you have enough hope yourself to even pass on? Or has it dwindled? Has the fire dwindled a little? Are you ready to partner with God more closely? He wants to partner with you this morning. He wants to partner with you um, in, in your life. He wants you to hold his hand closely so you can high birdie fly <laughs> with ease. Are you ready to partner with God to listen more intently, pay more attention to the small details of what he's saying and where he is leading you? I want to invite you this morning, and I will hope I can get a team to pray, if that's okay, just to get ready. I want you to invite you to come down this morning if you want prayer, um, because maybe God has birthed something inside of you that's growing, developing, that you don't understand and you need clarity on or you just want prayer for. Maybe your fire's gone out. Maybe your fire's dwindled a little and you need to feel again the spark that light that we've seen, the spark of life back into your very soul so you can carry hope where you want to carry hope. But it starts with you, and it starts with you partnering with the Holy Spirit and letting him dwell deep inside of your heart. So please, please come down. If we have some leaders around and you want to come down for prayer, if, there's, if you want to feel the presence of God, you want to get a touch from heaven this morning, or maybe you're here and you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and you've, you, you, you're not sure, you can feel a little bit of that light starting to happen. There's something there, there's a nudge, and that's the, 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 there's an awareness of God happening in your heart. And he's calling you home. So if, if you're here this morning and you feel, I, I really need to know more about Jesus and you want someone to pray with you, I invite you to come down. I invite you to come down if you just want to get a fresh touch from heaven, a fresh touch so you can go out feeling and knowing that the Spirit of God is on you <laughs> and knowing that you are called to deliver hope and carry hope to all of those places that you um, are part of. So don't be shy. Come down this morning. And if there's people around, that, the leaders, um, that can pray, that would be great. Um, and again, I do encourage you, if you've never, ever received Jesus into your heart, it's the best thing you can do. There's no life like it. There's, no, there's nothing that can replace 
the awesome wonder of knowing that your Savior has redeemed and set you free. So just encourage you to come down this morning, guys. Get prayer. Who doesn't need fueled up for the week? Who doesn't need fueled up for the Christmas season? Thanks, guys. I'm just going to pray to start with, and then if you can gather around. Father God, I thank you for your word, God. I thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit that is so evident in this place, God. I thank you that you speak life, God, that there's no darkness in you at all. It is only light, Father. And I pray, God, that every heart that is here would feel a spark from heaven in their heart this morning, God. And whatever you've called them to do, Father, would you reveal it to them today, God? Would you give them fresh fire? to go from this place, God, and know that they are carriers of hope, God, that they are carriers of light to this nation, to this place, Father, that you are their Redeemer, God. And we thank you, Father, that you love us, that you shower blessings on us, God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.